Well, uh, you heard in the open there from Drew Johnson uh, from Panhandle uh, Dumpsters. We had him on the program yesterday as we've uh, also discussed uh, Certificate of Knee with Judiciary Chairman Senator Charles Trump yesterday as well. Got a lot of good information out there. And we've invited Clint Hogman in, Chairman of the Solid Waste Authority, to come in and add uh, further clarity. This all started with a letter that went out, email fashion, from Panhandle Dumpsters to about 300 of their customers out of the, uh, I think Drew said they have eleven or 12,000 out of the Eastern Panhandle that they would no longer be providing service to those customers. And as part of that, he, cert- he cited Certificate of Need in that, which is why we've kind of begun uh, really peeling back the layers of that onion here on the program the last couple of days. Clint, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. Good uh, morning, everyone. Great to have you. You came into the conversation because of the uh, recommendation you made to the council previously, I guess, was back in November regarding recycling. Was it uh, for their application for recycling? Well, um, Panhandle's application was for waste hauling and recycling. Okay, so, very good. So it was both topics, and they uh, placed themselves on the council's agenda, and I received two phone calls, one from Doug Copenhaver and a couple from Dan Dolier, asking for my thoughts and eventually asking if I would attend uh, the hearing, uh, the, the meeting that they had scheduled. And uh, and I was eventually asked to speak at, and, and had gone in intending not to say anything, but... Uh, Actually, uh, the recommendation I had for the council, it was a situation where Panhandle, I think, if I remember right, was asking for a letter of endorsement, a letter of support. Uh, Apple Valley was also present, um, explaining, you know, their perspective of the thing. And and I, and, and my recommendation to the council uh, at that moment was the same as it was to the Solid Waste Authority, which was uh, really it was premature. Um, the certificate of convenience and necessity is what it's really called Mm -hmm. um is the waste hauling permit is is uh, defined in statute uh it's defined in west virginia law it's been interpreted by two court decisions one federal and one state and if you look at the whole picture of those things you really need it to wait until both sides present it the their arguments on on the adequacy of the existing service before you should make a recommendation. And so um, the Solid Waste Authority, which also had been asked by Panhandle to uh, support their application, what our board did, I mean, I think originally Panhandle asked me individually if I would support it and I declined. I said, you know, I represent a board and it would be a board decision. Mm -hmm. Essentially the board uh, said, well, you know, it's hard to make a decision in abstract. It's hard to make a decision when you're not hearing the evidence. So they formed a committee of two, myself and John Christensen. We went in for two days, listened to the uh, hearing. Um, we went in unbiased, uh, having you know no preference to either. We had met with, I think I had personally met with representatives of Panhandle maybe five times. They had met with our board. Uh, we, you know, we had worked through the topics, and so you know, at the at the end of the two days, the very last entity called to testify was me on behalf of the Solid Waste Authority, and I had consulted with uh, John Christensen to get his views and throughout throughout the two days, and uh, and we concluded that um, Panhandle, who had the burden of proof to demonstrate that the existing service was was inadequate that they had clearly failed to do so and so our my testimony on behalf of the solid waste authority was to that effect in what ways did they fail to present enough evidence clint i wasn't well, present at the hearing so i'm not sure exactly how that works or what it looked like well that was the um for me that was like the sixth time i had testified at a, a public service commission hearing so I had testified um, on behalf of the Solid Waste Authority against Apple Valley. I had testified um, against waste management. I had testified for Republic. I had testified for a company called Panhandle Pumping. And those, um, so I had some experience there Mm -hmm. to know what, and and it's one of those things that's kind of hard to describe orally, but you know it when you see it. And so the, the applicants that have been successful in getting a certificate uh, here in the Eastern Panhandle, they had photographs, they had charts, they had logs, they had uh, um, a, a, a trash not being picked up. Correct. For instance, correct. They, you know, I I can remember in the Republic, 
Uh, when Republic successful, successfully got a permit in, in here uh, in the Eastern Panhandle, they had over 200 photographs of overflowing dumpsters. Um, and they would take a picture and then a week later take a picture and a week later take a picture of the same dumpster and it would still be overflowing. Um, and, and so, you know, they really done their homework uh, um, and, um, and they presented, you could present the information along with oral testimony. I mean, um, Panhandle's case, I think they had, if I remember right, about 10 folks testify for them, but really only two of them had issues with Apple Valley. And so um, when you, when you, you, you have, um, you know, an evidentiary hearing, I'm going to call it, where you're supposed to really present somebody not doing something and you only have a couple people and no charts, no graphs, no logs, you really aren't presenting a very good case, in my view. Drew yesterday claimed they had, uh, I think it was a couple hundred letters, it might have been more than that, uh, that the ALJ did not accept because they were not individually, personally signed. They did have in their application, I think it was over 500 um, um, email type letters that um, people supporting Panhandle's application. Um, and if I recall correctly, when the judge issued her final decision, she pointed out that sort of procedurally, they never presented those letters as, as part of the, the evidence. They never presented them to um, during the hearings. They did, they did submit them with the application. Drew said they tried to, but the ALJ wouldn't accept them because they were electronically signed. No, that, that, that's not my memory. My, they were electronically signed. I mean, that, that, um, that is correct. But my memory is, uh, and, and you, we can go to the uh, administrative law judge's decision. It's a written decision. It's not hard to read. It's about 20 pages. And it seems to me she specifically said and that she gave little weight to those because they were not submitted as evidence. Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, uh, good morning, Clint. A couple of points, uh, I think, for my own clarification. Uh, the county council was is not in a position to make the decision. Unlike Ward and Sewer, where the decision has been shifted to county council, it still remains with the Public Service Commission in case of litter and recycling. Is that correct? Well, Chapter 24A, 2-5 is where the Certificate of Convenience and Necessity yeah. is defined. It's in statute, but and it specifically a, yeah. gives authority only to the Public Service okay. Commission. So if you've heard somewhere that the Solid Waste Authority yeah. denied Panhandle, not correct. If you heard somewhere that the county council denied Panhandle, not correct. Uh, they, you, anyone, any citizen of the territory can participate in the, in the hearing. You just simply ask to be there. You don't have to hire a lawyer or whatever. And um, so the, I think that it's pretty rare for the council to get involved in those things, and they only did so because Panhandle asked. The other thing is, I was thinking that it, this was a solid way, or oh, excuse me, a uh, wayside uh, residential pickup. But as pointed out yesterday, the real issue, at least in Pan Am, uh Dumpster's mind, is that a re, uh, residential recycling. And there's a difference between these two. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I understand that question. I mean, category, categorically, waste hauling is divided into commercial and residential. Now, the application that Panhandle made was for residential only. It was for trash and recycling um, for residents only. They also have a commercial business uh, where they haul for businesses, but that was not part of the application. Now, I'm talking about strictly recycling, excuse me, strictly residential. And he was mm -hmm. making the distinction yesterday that the, uh, uh, the trash hauling was not really concerned. His, ba his greatest concern was the inability for the recycling, the residential recycling. Yeah, and, and they, that would be a great place to read the judge's decision because I, I think the judge um, articulated really well uh, some of the same emotions that I had. If recycling was um, the thrust of their interest, it was, there, it was very vague in their application. They, and they suggested in, to the PSC um, that, you know, that they were looking at curbside recycling. However, they came to the Solid Waste Authority and gave an hour presentation about a drop-off program only. Uh, these would be containers set at seven locations with no staffing. We've tried that before, and so we know it would fail. 
and um, we were solid waste authority and was not interested in that you know so um again i you know with with panhandle with the panhandle application i, I just found it was as clear and it was vague and not concise and well presented as those that had been successful in getting a certificate yeah maria lawrence so um forgive me my knowledge of certificate of need is much more aligned in the healthcare arena okay. than um uh, but i certainly heard the argument yesterday so um my understanding of when the psc makes this kind of ruling it's it's based on the fact that the need is being met somewhere else as well um is that and again i didn't read the ruling so i'm yeah. not for sure that that's that that had any bearing here but so, is that the case so the nerd in me is going to come out here okay, okay so <laughs> it, within great. the solid waste arena is uh -huh. different than within than the healthcare than the arena. Healthcare. okay the certificate of need in the solid waste industry it only applies to solid waste facilities facilities okay hauling mm -hmm. is certificate of convenience and necessity gotcha so they are similar in that they create market entry hurdles mm -hmm. uh, for you to be able to per be permitted in an, in an area okay uh, the certificate of convenience and necessity the certificate of need has 10 12 criteria that you have to meet sure. to obtain the certificate of convenience and necessity simply comes down to efficiency and adequacy of the okay. existing service okay. that's it and you know one of the things that we often hear is just what about the benefits of competition mm -hmm. uh, people mm -hmm. will say and that gets into the west virginia supreme court interpretation which was in 1989 and i think it was a case called stowers versus psc where the West Virginia Supreme Court specifically said that the Public Service Commission cannot consider competition as long as the existing service is adequate and efficient. So the PSC not considering competition is them doing their job, okay. following the laws of the land. Yep. Thank you. Joe Ferretti. Which, which probably speaks to why we may, might need some reform <laughs> at the <laughs> legislative level, uh, because I think people do value competition. competition. And, and, and uh, it's, it fosters innovation and, and uh hopefully improve services but regardless uh, that's an academic discussion uh you mentioned that you thought the uh presentation by panhandle before at the hearing was a little bit of thin soup for you uh what about the presentation of apple valley can you characterize uh what kind of presentation they made before the alj well the burden of proof falls on the applicant so you know panhandle had the the majority of the the presentation if you will Apple Valley's um, um, counter to things, I think, were was typical. Typical of what I have seen in, in hearings. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was well done. Um, and um, did they have public uh, pu public input, support, uh, people letters, uh, people testifying that the services they were receiving were adequate? They did have people testifying, but I, I don't remember that it was everyday citizens. Um, I. I th I think it was more employees uh, of the company, managers of the company. Uh, one, one of the areas that I think did come out in that hearing uh, was, at, was at Apple Valley's um, help desk. Their dispatching uh, center needed help. And, um, and one of their managers you know, got up and essentially agreed and indicated all of the changes that they had made recently to, to improve their help desk millions of dollars and bunches of employees and so on and so forth that was done i sort of remember that but i joe i don't remember a, uh you know um there wasn't really a lot either side didn't have a lot of people uh, uh i remember panhandle indicating to us that there would be something like to the effect of people flowing out the building there was really only about 10 people that that spoke yeah Clint, i think it's beyond question that you have your finger on the pulse of things when it comes to recycling in, in berkeley county and, and probably in, in general in terms of, of hauling trash what's your sense of things in the county uh, what kind of feedback do you get from uh, people who live here in terms of the services they're receiving currently is there any excellent concerns question. being expressed excellent question thank you for asking that because i've been on the solid waste authority for 30 years and i've watched it change i watched it evolve um, there was a time back in 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 where people were really stirred up. That services was, uh, there was one hauler, 
that did residential, did commercial, they owned the landfill, they did recycling, and the services were really weak. And we would receive 10, 12 phone calls a day. Um, Apple Valley came in around 2006, and at the same time, we were successful in our efforts to bring other waste haulers here for the commercial side, and now if we get two phone calls a year, it's a surprise. Um, it, 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 is, it has changed a lot. In fact, the, the county council back in 2016 uh, did a comprehensive plan, and part of that plan, they surveyed the public, and the public rated the various components of the infrastructure, you know, water, sewer, parks. Solid waste was one of those. Solid waste ranked the highest of all the infrastructure. It ranked something like 70% was very good. We conducted, uh, we, we do annual, we do five-year plans and we conducted two public hearings. And if there are issues in the solid waste arena, people will come to submit emails or come to the hearings and will talk to us, uh, you know, in addition to daily phone calls and so on and so, so forth. Um, no one attended the hearing we conducted in 2021 or 2022 and said, you know, we need additional haulers or we have service problems. So, you know, you know my, my testimony uh, included these types of statements that, you know, um, there, there are just no evidence of inadequate service. Clint, how many, what's the percent of the of residents are using curbside recycling? Sure. Well, uh, I think Apple, Apple Valley has said uh, approximately a third of their residents subscribe to uh, curbside. Uh, of course, there are hundreds of people a day that use the drop-off exactly. facilities, yeah. and, and it's hard to extrapolate from that how many of that represents a household. Uh, but it is, it is clearly, I mean, one of, the th one of the things that we pointed out in this hearing um, last year, Berkeley County recycled, um, I think it was 7,300 tons, uh, the largest, by far the largest of any other county in West Virginia. And in fact, you could group counties together into what's called waste sheds and regional, and we exceeded all waste sheds, our county alone exceeded all regional areas of the state. Now, this is the material dropped off at your site at, on Grapevine Road. Plus what Apple Valley Plus picks up. Plus what Apple Valley, that's my point. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and that, what Apple Valley picks up at the curb of that 7,300 is about seven or 800 tons. So it's, it's, a, it's a minority amount. The vast majority of our weight is organics it's brush it's, mm -hmm. it's yard waste it's food waste uh, those things weigh a lot and we get a lot of volumes of those items and i'm guessing there's a surcharge then if you um if you if you want curbside recycling as well correct yeah, I, yeah. the psc sets apple valley's rates okay and if memory serves me right it's about, uh, about four dollars a month is, okay. is what they set for okay. if you it's it's optional and um and they've set a rate for Jefferson County, too, for, for the recycling. Yeah, I'm always intrigued. I live in the city of Martinsburg, and today was recycling day, so I hauled all my stuff outside. And, you know, I look I, – this is going to sound weird, but sometimes I look at my neighbor's trash, and I'm like, you could just put that out for free. How hard is this? You know, side story, sorry. Yeah. But yeah. Um, anyway, we have a good little neighborhood, with the exception of a couple, um, who recycle well. But – you know, it's it, it's not that difficult. So, so. One of the things that I'd, I'd like to bring into discussion, if I could, sure. uh, Rob, is is why is there what, what are the benefits of the certificate of means and necessity? Um, from from my perspective, anyway, as someone that you know has followed solid waste for a long time now, and I often tell the story that uh, when I grew up, my parents lived in a farm, little farm outside of the town of Hedgesville, and we received trash service from the town of Hedgesville. And when I left home and moved three miles away along the river uh, to the little Georgetown area, and I called town of Hedgesville, they're like, we don't service that area. And I called the only hauler that was in Berkeley County, which was uh, Berkeley Sanitation, and they said, we don't service that area. There was no one that serviced little Georgetown. Now, what fixed that? certificate of need certificate of convenience and necessity was implemented and it required the hauler to serve every house in the territory for the same price and uh and so when you know i got him on the solid waste authority in 1992 one of the first things we felt important to address 
was there was something, I think it was 125 open dumps in Berkeley County. And these open dumps were created by people who didn't have trash service, had no option. And, and they would pile it in their backyard. They would pile it in a sinkhole. They would pile it along the road. They would pile it anywhere. And they got big and they were active. Uh, and so as, you know, waste services became more available, it took lots of time and lots of money. But those open dumps are predominantly cleaned up. And today you still see open dumps, but they're smaller. Um, they're uh, not as big as an issue as they were, let's say, 30 years ago. So the, 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 the certificate brought the advantage of making uh, our environment cleaner, making services, uh, standardizing services. It also, um, you know, there was the sort of cost uh, economics of scale where you had, uh, you know, one hauler serving a territory and they could you know split that price so that the rural area paid the same price as those that live in the corner of king and queen so clint uh one i appreciate you coming in and doing the interview here this morning and i want to talk to you about that aspect of the concept of of uh of one trash hauler getting to the rural parts of the county and easily getting to the more clustered parts of the county or or city if you would uh sure but there's an exception to that if you want to be a hauler who doesn't dump in west virginia you can haul that trash to pennsylvania the harper exemption yes right so effectively though you're creating a little loophole i don't i don't mean you specifically in a gap where panhandle dumpsters can now concentrate on right clustered areas can do whatever they want with their price obviously they have to put it to a point where they can stay in business because they have to account for the additional mileage of, of going to another state to dump. But doesn't that hurt Apple Valley Waste's business model of being able to provide the same price to the country home as they are to the clusters now? Because yeah. Panhandle Dumpsters is picking off some of those more clustered areas and leaving only the more diverse dis uh, dispersed areas. Right. And, and, and I'll let Apple Valley speak for themselves, whether it's hurting them or not financially. But it uh, but yes, it breaks the mold of the concept, uh, the Harper decision, uh, which is a federal court decision involving a Ohio waste hauler name whose last name was Harper. Um, that decision had greatest impact was in the panhandles, the northern panhandle and the eastern panhandle. Across the most of the state, it has not had that big of an impact. Um, and it makes the case, um, what's happening here in Berkeley and Jefferson County, I think makes the case uh, for those downstate counties, why the certificate of convenience and necessity is important. It's important to them because it, uh, they, they know the Harper exemption haulers will cherry pick, as they use that term, and that they will not service the rural areas. They will um, lower prices initially and then get customers and then raise prices. And, and they will point to the Eastern Panhandle as an example of where that's happening and and that has in my view um, created the scenario where it is probably virtually impossible for our legislators to address this topic it is it will become um, uh, a panhandle issue only if you will and and not have uh, I like locality. Hey, um, oh, we're just about out of time um, so I, real quick, because I need this is a follow up to that, Clint, mm -hmm. and that is, is it viable to say to a company like the Harper decision that wants to come in here and cherry pick trash? If you want to operate here, you got to serve everybody here. You can't just pick and choose who you're going to serve. Yeah, I really haven't thought about that. So I don't know if, if you could legally do that. I mean, I think that's that's um, I, I mean, I, I, I guess you could. My first instinct would be, I guess you could say. You may have to move that to the county level. You but if, if you can't, then does it not make more sense than to give them the, the certificate of convenience so that Apple Valley and Panhandle Dumpsters are on equal footing, that Apple Valley's best customers, and by best I mean clustered, can't mm -hmm. be cherry-picked, thereby hurting their ability to afford to go get trash 50 miles away? Yeah, one of the problems or concerns with multiple haulers is duplication of services. And this is, again, residential owner. This does not apply to the commercial haulers. But uh, when you've got two trucks going down the same street, splitting the uh, revenue, 
there's a concern that it does nothing more than drive up prices for everyone. And in fact, the administrative law judge in her ruling referenced that. Yeah, but that's inconsistent because you're still duplicating services in the sense that they're still operating in Berkeley County. No doubt that it's not a perfect system, um, but, but it is it is one that has proven over time, I think, to work. Bill, if you have a quick, very quick, uh, Apple Valley's prices are dictated by the Public Service Commission, the government. Correct. What about Pan Al dumpsters? They set their prices. They set the good enough. Good follow up, Bill. Clint, thanks so much for coming in. You're, uh, you're welcome. Hope you, uh, hope you don't feel like you were on trial here. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I don't mind it at all.